My Indian name is Thaki To. It means protector of the camp with a warrior clan of the Kickapoo Nation. And my, uh, I took, uh, my dad gave me his uh, Indian name that I was assigned to in the government boarding school, Fred Chester. So uh, I found out that they didn't put Junior on my birth certificate, and I used Junior all through my military years, and, and I didn't realize that I wasn't a Junior until about 10 years ago. I have to see that on my birth certificate that Junior wasn't on there. So that's my full name, Fred Chester Wapipaw. I was born in a government hospital, Concha, Oklahoma, and uh, 19, June the 7th, 1930. I spent my first five years in, a, in the Indian village in McLeod, Oklahoma. Part of the culture is that uh, the oldest of the grandkids stay with the grandparents uh, for the formative years to instill uh, the culture values to that. And then, then he sort of, uh, uh, inadvertently uh, uh, helps uh, the kids that come along behind him. So I, uh, I had a good uh, time with my grandfather as a kid. I was his shadow, I was told, and he spoke only uh, the Kickapoo Indian language, and uh, so that was my first language. And when we got out to the out to the farm when I was seven years old, uh, dad and mom didn't talk Indian to the kids because they were practically raised in government boarding schools. One time I asked mom, my mom says, how come Dad never talked Indian to us? He said, well, actually, he'd rather be uh, a white man than an Indian man that he is. So that's a part of how I lost my language. I, I know some exp expressions and a few words here and there. My mom was uh, Sacky Fox Indian a long time ago, uh, 100 years or so ago. There were two tribes. In order to survive, they, they connected and became one tribe. Sock was the name of the tribe, but then Fox. But by the, time, by the time you read something about the second box, now it's S-A-C, and then the word A-N-D, and then F-O-X. <clears throat> and uh, way back when, the people, the tribes broke up in bands because uh, they needed to do that as they were running and surviving uh, the uh, Western uh, movement. <clears throat> and uh, so the second foxes are in Kansas and Missouri and Iowa and uh, Oklahoma. And my dad is a full-blooded uh, Kickapoo Indian. Well, I'll go back up to my mom. She's half Irish and half Sac and Fox. And uh, she was picked up uh, when she was six years old as well as my dad and put on a train and sent to government boarding schools. And so when she was at government boarding school, they de uh, the kids and uh, put an army uniform, wool uniform on them and uh, marched them everywhere to the mess hall, to church. And uh, she worked in the uh, laundry room and so she graduated from government boarding school uh, many years later, as well as my dad. That's where they met in government boarding school. And my dad is a full but a Kickapoo Indian, and they broke up in bands too. There are two bands in old Mexico, down one band below Texas, another band below uh, Arizona. And if you go into the uh, into the visit the Kickapoo Indians down below Texas, like going back in time for 500 years, because they still live in the in the old the old homes that they used to live in or lived in before the Bible was written, the cattail reed homes, uh, the winter homes, and then the bark houses for the summer homes. And when I went there to visit, uh, my only one the the one time, they uh, they didn't have any any English speaking uh, people there. There was one that spoke very broken English, and. Uh, <clears throat> So uh, I met my uh, adopted uh, grandmother there. When somebody dies in their tribe, then somebody's adopted to take that person's place. And so when my grandmother died, well, she took her place. And so she was that assuming she cried and said, my home is your home, like that. So uh, that was my experience with the Kickapoos down there. Now, the Kickapoos are about maybe five or 600 strong in Oklahoma. And there's some Kickapoos in Kansas. And I understand there's a few in Missouri, too. And uh, so. <clears throat> Dad uh, was raised in an Indian village, and uh, I was, uh, I, I like to think that I'm one of the only few Indians left actually in this whole United States that uh, lived in an Indian village. And uh, because it just doesn't happen, the Indian villages broke up during World War II. Everybody going to work in, uh, in uh, the defense plants and uh, going to join the army and military like that. So it is sort of the two villages we had there, the Kickapoo country in Oklahoma. They just, uh, they just disappeared. I remember going out there one time after the World War II, and just the, the homes are still there, but there's just weeds everywhere, and just really was sad that nobody occupied those places anymore.
I think since day one, there's been a, a program, so to speak, genocide practices from day one. And uh, so I think that was part of that program, so to speak, as well as the killing of all the buffaloes. You know, in 1879, there was only 18 buffalo left. Can you, can you believe that? And, uh, but this, there, the Indian population was at its lowest ebb in the 1890s, like a couple of hundred thousand overall in the United States, and now it's a, it's a couple, of, couple of million. And, uh, but there's a lot of intermarriage through these uh, government boarding schools, like my mom and dad met there. And the reason uh, my mom and dad's uh, name is Wafi Paw, that's my grandfather's name, leader of Eagles, was because they didn't want their uh, assigned names. They were assigned names in government boarding school. Dad was uh, Fred Garland, Fred Chester Garland. My mom was uh, Cecilia Mabel Jennings. And they didn't want to get married uh, with those names, so they used their grandfather's Indian name. And therefore, there's, that's how the Wafi Paws got started. There's about six generations of Wafi Paws now. So my being 80 years old, uh, I, I've seen, I've seen, in a, seen these generations grow, and uh, I'm very proud that uh, they, there are some very uh, beautiful scholastic uh, uh, achievements from the Wafipa family over the years. Uh, have dignity, be honorable, and uh, be true to yourself, and uh, walk straight and talk straight. <laughs>